scene 1408. Don't forget to like and subscribe. In the year 1914, amidst the French countryside, Mrs. Mueller and Roger travel in a horse-drawn carriage towards his family's villa. During the voyage, he finds his attention involuntarily drawn to the older woman's generous bosom, and he makes a sincere effort to redirect his gaze. Outside the grand mansion, his mother and Aunt Marguerite warmly greet him as he returns home. One of the maids, Ursula, assists him with his luggage and inquires if he still recalls her despite his three-year absence, to which the team confirms. From the attic window, Mr. Frank, a friend of his father's, offers a wave. Upon entering the house, Roger's sister, Berth, warmly embraces him in a hug. Afterward, as the siblings take a leisurely walk around the estate, they encounter Mrs. Mueller who has recently completed gathering fruits. Her husband walks past them, and Berthy exchanges greetings with the elder gentleman. Unexpectedly, Mrs. Mueller lifts her dress and relieves herself, startling the teenager. While Roger meanders away alone, he comes across Mr. Mueller deep in the woods, engaged in prayer before a picture of his wife, and stuffing an assortment of flowers into his pants. As the teenager inadvertently steps on a twig, the resulting sound catches the attention of the older gentleman. Reacting swiftly, Roger takes off running, but his haste leads to a stumble, causing him to fall to the ground. A few moments later, he perceives laughter in the vicinity and decides to trace the source of the sound. To his surprise, he witnesses Ursula making love to Adolfi, one of the villa's male workers. When the woman sees the teen peeping, she simply laughs and greets him a good morning, causing the embarrassed Roger to flee. During supper, the teenager's gaze remains intrigued as he watches Helene, an appealing maid. Mr. Frank inquires of the mother about her daughter Elisa's boyfriend, prompting her to explain that he holds the rank of a lieutenant in the army. She proceeds to display a picture of the couple to Mr. Frank, and upon hearing Bertha's sarcastic comments about the photograph, she summons the governess Kate to accompany her daughter to bed. Moments later, Roger excuses himself, and when he kisses his aunt goodnight, the woman refuses him a second kiss on her cheek. That night, while getting ready for bed, the teenager perceives a noise coming from the hallway. Curious, he ventures to investigate and discovers Helene engaged in an intimate encounter with an unidentified man through an open doorway. Returning to his room, he finds Bertha on his bed as he pulls back the sheets. Bertha mentions that she isn't feeling sleepy and expresses her desire to carry on a conversation with her dearly missed brother. Bertha discloses that their mother had mentioned Marguerite's decision to remain chaste due to her fear of men. When Roger inquires about why Mr. Frank and his aunt aren't in a relationship, Bertha offers her perspective, suggesting that she believes it's due to Mr. Frank's unattractive appearance and somewhat eccentric behavior. Abruptly, Kate enters the scene to scold Bertha for leaving her bed, prompting the girl to hastily return to her own room. Observing the sheets rising, the governess attempts to remove the covers, causing Roger to awkwardly shield himself. The following day, the siblings observe the maids from the other side of the river as they dip their feet in the water. Ursula and Helene inquire of Mrs. Mueller about her husband, and she confidentially admits that he still experiences difficulties in the bedroom. A short while later, Adolfi and Valentin playfully taunt the women from across the water, leading Ursula to play along by bearing her backside to amuse the men. Witnessing this, Roger is utterly shocked by the scene. Later on the same day, their father and sister Alyssa make their appearance, and the family gathers at the steps to warmly receive them. Once inside the house, Berth and Roger examine their father's collection of metal samples. The older man expresses his regrets about the business slowdown due to the absence of war, which has resulted in a decrease in demand for military metals. During that afternoon, as the maids and Adolfi collaborate to haul supplies up into the barn, the man playfully catches Roger in the act of peeking under Ursula's skirt and responds by tossing hay at him. Later on, Bertha leads her brother to the chapel and they clandestinely make their way to a crawl space situated above the confession booth. Bertha reveals that she stumbled upon this hidden space by chance and has subsequently spent numerous hours eavesdropping from there. Once his sister departs, Roger remains behind and secretly listens to his aunt Marguerite's confession to Father Gabriel. To his astonishment, his aunt confesses to having improper thoughts about Roger. As Roger leans in, the ceiling suddenly collapses, causing him to tumble into the priest's confession booth and startling his aunt. Later, Elisa's boyfriend Roland arrives and becomes a witness to Roger's reprimand. That night, Bertha consoles her weeping brother and offers him a comforting goodnight kiss. A short while later, 
he hears Helene and the unidentified man engaged in intimate activity in the hallway once more. Positioned near a cabinet, he notices Mr. Frank also observing the scene involving the maid. Subsequently, he crosses paths with Ursula, who admits she's equally clueless about the identity of Helene's secret lover. Roger then proceeds to the attic, where he finds Mr. Frank using his telescope. After the man excuses himself, the teen peeks through the telescope and sees a couple making love on the grass outside. Afterward, he discovers a book resting on Mr. Frank's table and swiftly tucks it into his pocket right before the man makes his return. Before departing, Roger musters the courage to ask the man if he also experienced teenage frustrations. The man candidly admits that he still occasionally contends with similar feelings. As he heads back, the teenager surreptitiously glances into his parents' bedroom to satisfy his curiosity. However, Roland catches him and threatens to tell his parents what he did, so Roger tells the man he'll do anything he asks. On the following day, Roland instructs the teen to wash his car, initiating Roger's task. In due course, Alyssa joins them, and as Roland climbs onto the vehicle to share a kiss with her, Roger strategically places a water bucket underneath him. This results in Roland slipping and taking a tumble. Later in the same day, seeking solitude, the teenager seeks refuge in the chicken coop. There, he explores the contents of Mr. Frank's book filled with adult illustrations and writings. Unexpectedly, Adolfi enters the scene, engaged in the task of spreading hay on the ground. Then, Helene appears through the window to feed the chickens. Subsequently, the man moves closer to Helene and takes her by surprise, abruptly closing the window and inadvertently trapping her within the small opening. Helene begs Roger for help, but immediately changes her mind when Adolfi makes love to her from outside. The teen exits the coop and sees the maid's exposed backside. Returning to the house, Roger seizes the opportunity while Elisa is preoccupied and swaps her book with Mr. Frank's book containing adult content. Following that, he proceeds to mock Roland's choice of footwear, provoking the man to report to his mother that Roger had been observing their bedroom the previous night. Consequently, the mother commands Roger to exit the room, and he obeys, though he discreetly lingers in a corner to ensure that his sister retrieves the book. Later on, he observes Elisa reading the adult book beneath a tree. In the kitchen, he startles Ursula as she attends to the oven. Her shock leads to an accidental breaking of a plate over his head. Recognizing Roger, she offers care for his injury, entreatingly pressing her body close to his face. The moment is abruptly interrupted by the entrance of another maid. Determined to assert his maturity, Roger takes initiative and trails after Mrs. Mueller to the second story of the chapel. From a small window, she signals her husband to cease his prayer at the altar. Suddenly, the teen enters the room and begins touching the older woman inappropriately. At first, the woman tells him to stop, but eventually encourages him by lifting up her skirt. A messenger from outside enters the scene, causing the woman to abruptly leave the room. Outside, the messenger delivers news to the workers that Germany has declared war on France. Meanwhile, within the mansion, the wealthy family rejoices upon receiving the news of the war declaration, as this signifies an anticipated increase in demand for military medals. During that evening, the male workers of the villa seize the opportunity to make the most of their final night, engaging in rendezvous with the female workers. Roger is eager to join in on the festivities, but is disheartened to discover that all the others have already found partners, leaving him disappointed. On the following day, Berth and her mother observe Elisa as she bids farewell to Roland. At the same time, the female staff members join the men as they leave the villa, embarking on a horse-drawn carriage for their departure. During their return, the women exchange knowing glances with the teenager, conveying an understanding of the situation that had unfolded. Later that day, Ursula asks Roger to help her carry a mattress upstairs. In the bedroom, he makes a move on the woman, who's amused by the inexperienced teen's advances. Eventually, the woman closes the door, undresses in front of Roger, and they make love. After the deed, the elated teen professes his love for Ursula and asks her to marry him. The woman laughs lightheartedly because she realizes he only expressed the sentiment since it's his first time sleeping with a woman. A short while later, Bertha notices her brother's torn shirt and deduces that he has just engaged in the intimate act. She proceeds to inform Roger that their mother is presently engaged in a conversation with Father Gabriel. Subsequently, they quietly make their way to the living room to discreetly listen to the ongoing conversation. 
Inside the room, their mother discusses the challenges she and her husband have been facing in their marital relationship. In response, Father Gabriel offers his counsel, advising her to focus on being present and attentive to her husband's needs, particularly during this period of wartime uncertainty. Suddenly, their mother detects the sound of her children's giggles and promptly scolds them for eavesdropping on the private conversation. At a later time, Roger unexpectedly emerges from the water while Kate is brushing her hair by the river. Inquiring about her change in routine, he asks why she didn't use to sit by the river. Kate explains that her feeling of safety has improved since the men have departed for war. Roger confesses to Kate that he has always found her attractive. Subsequently, he stands up from the water, revealing that he's without clothing. He playfully splashes water onto Kate, and the two soon find themselves engaged in cheerful activities by the river. Several days later, Elisa rushes to share with her family that Roland's achievement of taking down a third plane has been featured in the newspaper. The adults express admiration for the bravery of the war hero, and Elisa highlights that her boyfriend is adorned with one of her father's medals in the photograph. Later that evening, Kate and Margaret surreptitiously observe the parents' bedroom. A moment after, Roger joins them, displaying audacity as he opens the door and takes a seat to watch his parents. Inside the room, the couple is immersed in a role-playing scenario where Roger's father pretends to be officiating a mock execution involving Marguerite. Eventually, the father notices his son's presence, prompting the teenager to exit the room, leaving his parents feeling embarrassed and lost for words. A short while later, Marguerite returns to her bedroom, only to discover her nephew sitting on her bed. He requests a goodnight kiss, and she obliges with a peck on the cheek. However, the situation takes a peculiar turn when the teenager specifies that he desires the kind of kisses she used to give him when he was younger. Alarmed by his request, Marguerite sternly instructs him to leave or she'll notify his mother. As he's preparing to depart, Roger claims to hear approaching footsteps. Curious, Marguerite inquires about the visitor's identity, and he reveals that Mr. Frank has arrived with the intention of reading her a poem he composed for her. While Mr. Frank remains oblivious, reciting the poem that professes his love for Marguerite, Roger subtly guides the woman by taking her hand and leading her back to the bed. He turns the Mother Mary statue so that it faces the wall, right before the woman performs a pleasurable act. Outside the door, Mr. Frank becomes aware of sounds emanating from within the room. On the subsequent day, Roger notices that Mr. Frank has received a package. Intrigued, he discreetly shadows the man to the attic and observes as he peers into a wooden box containing explicit images. Curious, Roger questions Mr. Frank about why he doesn't engage in real relationships with women. Mr. Frank responds, explaining that such a task might be simpler for someone with Roger's perspective. Later that evening, as Helene walks down the hallway, Roger summons her into his room. Roger inquires with the maid, asking her who she believes the unidentified man engaging in intimate encounters with her in the hallway might be, as he deduces it's neither his father nor Mr. Frank. Helene speculates that it could be Mr. Mueller, but Roger points out that Mrs. Mueller has mentioned her husband's difficulties with intimacy. The maid speculates that Mr. Mueller might be able to engage in intimate activities only with his lover. When the maid is about to leave, Roger stops her by the doorway and makes love to her the same way her mystery lover used to. The following day, Berth questions her brother about whether he engaged in intimate activities with the governess, and he confirms it. She confesses that Kate and the other maids also informed her that Roger had similar encounters with all of them. When his sister inquires if he's been intimate with Marguerite, he responds that they didn't engage in a complete encounter. Just then, Elisa rides by on her horse, prompting the teen to trail after her into the stables. While the woman tends to her gorse, Roger kindly offers to alleviate her discomfort by removing her shoes from her tired feet. However, the teen begins touching the woman inappropriately. Elisa tries to stop her brother, but they hear Mrs. Mueller enter the stables. While the older woman is busy tending to the horse in the stable next to them, Alyssa finally gives in and makes love to Roger. Outside, Bertha sees her brother leaving the stables and deduces that he just finished doing the deed with someone new. Seconds later, she sees Alisa, and the girl realizes what just happened. That night, Ursula and Helene enter Roger's room at the same time to make love to him. After the act, the women leave the room. Ursula notices Marguerite, heading towards the teenager's chamber, and upon spotting Kate, she lets the governess know that her presence is required in Roger's room. 
As she is about to leave, the maid changes her mind and decides to join the activities. The next morning, Ursula wakes up and leaves the sleeping Roger, Kate, and Marguerite on the bed. Days later, after the teen and Elisa make love, the woman reveals that she might be pregnant and that she doesn't know what to do. Out of nowhere, a plane soars above, prompting her to swiftly draw Roger behind a tree, ensuring they remain hidden from Roland's view. Once the war hero safely lands the plane, the family welcomes him with enthusiasm. He shares his delightful news of being promoted to the rank of captain. On their journey back to the house, they encounter a carriage transporting the male workers who have returned from the war. Subsequently, the maids and workers rig up a suspension for Adolfi, utilizing his injured leg in an attempt to extend it. Unexpectedly, a tearful Mrs. Mueller walks by and imparts the news of her husband's demise in the war. This prompts the other maids to rally around her for support. During the evening, Ursula ventures into Roger's room to disclose her pregnancy. He proposes that she wed Adolfi, yet she declines, citing his current disability as a hindrance. In light of this, she contemplates the possibility of marrying Valentine, despite the fact that he has lost an eye. Just before departing, the teenager requests that she bring him a bottle of red nail polish. Once the maid departs, Marguerite enters to confide in him that she is also expecting a child. In response, Roger proposes that she consider marrying Mr. Frank, whom he perceives as a kind man evidently smitten with her. Before long, Ursula returns with the red nail polish, prompting the teenager to take her along to Elisa's room. There, he instructs the maid to apply some nail polish to his sister's sheets. Furious, Elisa intervenes, instructing Ursula to desist and taking the bottle of nail polish from her hands. To quell the escalating tension, Roger directs the maid to wait for him in his room, intending to have a conversation with his sister. He urges Elisa to locate Roland and convey the urgency of their need to be intimate. Following his advice, Elisa descends to find her unsuspecting boyfriend. Meanwhile, Roger returns to his room, fetching Marguerite, and leads her to the attic to be with Mr. Frank. Along the stairway, the teenager unintentionally overhears Elisa, persuading Roland that due to wartime circumstances, they can engage in physical intimacy before marriage, citing the approval of Father Gabriel. Subsequently, Roger proceeds to Kate's room to inquire whether she might be pregnant. Her negative response brings him a sense of relief, symbolizing the successful resolution of his various complications.